When people ask you how committed you are to your job and you respond by telling them about the time you woke up extra early to go see Ant-Man and the Wasp at 9.40 because you knew your viewers would love it. Hey guys, what's up? So I'm on my way to see Ant-Man and the Wasp. And you might be wondering why I'm doing a movie reaction show of review thing as a vlog. Well, you aren't the only one wondering. I am too. I am wondering how I got into this mess. I'm also wondering why Jesus is just like casually resting outside of my window for some reason. But more importantly, so I can't watch it last night. Worked on Thursday and I wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, probably on Saturday. So I had to watch it Friday morning because I worked Friday night too and there's literally no other time I could have gone to see it. And yeah, so I feel great. It's a, it's a great experience. I love it. Um, but yeah, so heading into the Wasp and Ant-Man. Okay, so heading into Ant-Man and the Wasp, here's what I'm thinking. So I like the whole idea, like him getting a partner, and the partner being better than him, at least, you know, that's what we can tell from the trailers so far. Like, the Wasp is going to be better than Ant-Man at practically everything, basically everything. That's how it seems to be going. Um, I like that dynamic, that idea, like, it's been used so many times, but it's still pretty funny. I would still find it pretty humorous, as long as it doesn't revolve around that, like, as long as that isn't the driving force of the movie, then I'm okay with it. If it becomes a complete driving force, then I'm, then I'm iffy, then I'm iffy. However, the villain looks semi-cool, pretty cool, ghost with their intangibility powers. I'm not sure, I don't think I've ever talked about it on this channel. Maybe I did in like my Spider-Man Homecoming video last summer. Um, but I'll, if I could have any powers I wanted, my top three choices are telekinesis, intangibility, and visibility. So they already have one, like the main villain has one of my all-time favorite powers. As long as like they make the villain actually good and the only thing cool about the and as long as the only thing that's cool about it isn't just that they can go intangible, then I think we're, we're gonna have a good story. Then, I, then I'm glad of it. Um, but like I said, that's all I'm really like looking for or expecting going to this movie. Um, but you know, clearly I'll have a bad review of it when I come out. However, I am thinking about maybe like later on, maybe in like a week or so, actually doing a theory on this movie, depending if there's any like big theory fodder that I can use. Which is really interesting. Like one of the things that I just find funny, another thing just going in the movie, um, when you miss out in the biggest on the biggest movie in Marvel history because you have family issues, it's just it's so funny. I I'm I'm dying. I am a little bit early, so I'll be going in in a few minutes, and then you guys will see afterwards what my reaction is to it. Yay! Okay, just finished. Um, the mid credit scene, which apparently is the important one, just played, and I am shook. Um, I'll talk about the movie in a second, but it was really the end credit scene, I have to say, so far has been the best part about the movie. Um, maybe not the best part, but it's been really good. Um, but yeah, now I just have to wait for the final credit scene, and I'm gonna come out and talk about the movie. Hey all, so I am out of the movie theater, I grabbed lunch, I got stuff from Walmart, like now I'm just recording this really quick, and then I'm going to go. I realized after I finished watching the movie, that this movie has like, some okay stuff, some pretty great stuff for theorizing, so I'm gonna keep this like, really short, so that I just do like a short review, just to like, say what I thought of it, and then like, probably in a week or so, I'll squeeze in another video about like, an actual theory about this because this movie deserves a theory, or a theory of how it's going to connect to the rest of the MCU. Okay, so the important thing right here now is, I thought the movie was okay. I wasn't super impressed by it until the after credit scene, but then again, that after credit scene was attaching the Ant-Man movie to the rest of the MCU, but that's not necessarily a credit to Ant-Man, that's just like a credit to like the writers knowing how to connect their stories. Um, overall, I like the story, like, uh, so I like the plot line of this, I liked 
how there was always like multiple different dangers like there was that small danger of their business the protection acts or whatever it was their business going out uh, there was the conflict of um, him of like being under house arrest there was the conflict of like Sonny and his gang trying to attack and steal the stuff and then there was the conflict of like you know actually ghost and the like the main villain so I like and of course there was also just the conflict of bringing the mom home which so all of those were very good conflicts I like that all the conflicts like complement each other and you could see all of them happening at once without it seeming like too crowded you know so that's one good thing about the movie it did a good job of not crowding the fact that it had so many conflicts and co the conflicts helped build on top of each other it wasn't like they were separate conflicts like we just switched from one to the other from one to the other to the other they were like overlapping conflicts i think the movie did that very well however there were some things i didn't like about the movie one just it was super okay so i felt like sunny was just so much of a cardboard cutout of like a stereotypical like I am working for very dangerous people. I didn't really, I was never afraid of him. I didn't feel like any sense of like evil or malice from him. It was really stupid. Like Sonny in general, like did it help with like adding extra conflicts? Yes. Did they do well? Like with sewing those conflicts together? Yes. But I felt like his side of the conflict was very lacking. Um, I found Ghost in general just way over the top, super dramatic. Like I felt as if she was a teenage girl who wasn't getting her way and was extremely mad about it. like almost like a girl having a temper tantrum basically was her entire mood for the entire time that we saw her one thing i did love is just cassie's part like i know that cassie's part was very small in general but like she did kind of help out and she gave the motivational speech at like the the climax the down part and like so I like Cassie. I, I really did like Cassie. She was really great. I like how it explains, like, yeah, he was on house arrest for two years. That's why he was in no way helping against Thanos or any of the build up to that. So I'm really glad, like, I'm not sure if I just missed it, but if I missed it, that means that I'm sure hundreds or thousands of other people missed it because I try to keep that as informed as impossible about all of these movies. So I'm hoping that this was just them like actually finally explaining why he wasn't there and that I just didn't miss that he was on house arrest the whole time. And I like that, yeah, again, like just going back to the whole house arrest thing in general, it's tying back into a previous movie. It's not like all the stuff from Civil War, because Civil War was a big thing. It like affected so many people. It was such a big climactic change for the rest of the MCU, for the foreseeable future. Like it literally changes everything. And I'm really glad that they kept sticking with that. Like, even in this movie that came out, what, two years after? It's not even part of, like, the actual, like, it's not even, because Civil War is technically a Captain America movie. This movie came out about two years after that, I think. I think it's two years. And it's still how it's showing that, like, ripple effect that's having on like, other superheroes as well. And like I thought that was just amazing and I was really happy because that's this is now the fourth movie that we've seen a direct effect from Civil War uh, which is exactly what we should see because it affected the next Marvel movie because Tony and um, Chris were not on speaking terms which made fighting a whole lot harder and for the record they still are not on terms they never met during that movie so they aren't good yet um, again it also affected the Black Panther because that's the whole reason why Wakanda was released and how like everything was found out and how he became the official ruler of Black Panther again because of the events that occurred in the Civil War. It affected Spider-Man because that is how why Spider-Man was brought into the Avengers. That's how he like da first donned his role as a superhero more of just than like a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man because of Civil War happened and that's why he has his own movie and why he was even in Avengers Infinity War is because of the events that happened in Civil War and now we see that's even affecting Ant-Man because because he went to Germany to fight against the other supers he was stuck on house arrest and because he was stuck on house arrest he can't help against Thanos and so I'm just really good that like that's just a comment on the writers and just how they're doing this like I'm so happy that they're making such a big event because when Civil War came out that was a huge event that was the first time we'd ever seen like superheroes fight supers you can see both sides of the argument I was really proud about that and I'm so happy that we aren't just forgetting about that that's literally constantly being brought up and shown to be important in in their movies that they're making afterwards like 
honestly, good job to the Marvel writers. That is so good. I am so happy that they're doing that. So I'm just going to rate this really quick. I'll scale of 1 to 10. 1 being, I hate it, get out of my head. 5 being, it was okay, but I probably wouldn't watch it again. And 10 being, oh my gosh, I loved it. I'm going to see it the next day. I'm probably going to rate this a 7. I would rate it an 8 because of all its connections to the other Marvel movies, but I want to rate it solely on what it did more than how it connects to everything else. Because if I rate it how it connected to everything else, probably 8 or 9, just because like, it's amazing. But I'm going to rate it a 7 because I'm judging it on what the movie actually did and not the potential it gives to the rest of the MCU. Alright, now I'm going to make a full video about this series, but I want to say it now because in case someone else comes out and like they say it later before I get a chance to put that theory out I want this video to be up to prove hey I thought this idea too maybe you were able to develop your theory more and like state it out in like a clear and not in a sensical way but I still had the idea as well so here's a theory of mine okay so there have been rumors about them trying to cast an older Cassie and so like some people think oh Avengers 4 is gonna be a time jump and then you know they'll have an older Cassie who will save uh, Ant-Man because he's stuck in the a quantum universe and then that like gives her a way to be a hero and I think that's a really cute idea and would I be mad if they went in that direction? No, because they plant the seeds in this movie. However, I thought of a better direction they could go that connects to more movies, okay? Because what is one thing we all remember from Infinity Wars? How Doctor Strange so easily gave up the time duel. But, like I said in my uh, video about that, he gave it up because he knew that Tony was essential, that Tony had to stay alive. Not because he saw that they would beat him. That was something that I stated. I think I stated it. If I didn't say it clearly then, I'm stating it clearly now. I believe that Doctor Strange saw that Tony must remain alive. So he doesn't see that the time stone, that Thanos having the time stone is what allows them to win. I think that it was Doctor Strange seeing that Tony must remain alive. If they don't remain alive, then they will not win. Now, what does Tony represent? He represents like he's kind of the leader of the Avengers, at least the legal leader. And he represents a lot of things. He's one of the icons, but the thing that he represents the most is that he is the most technologically adept. And I'm just saying, if someone such as Cassie knew that uh, her dad was off with his team and that they were going to the quantum uh, void and that and like she could reasonably guess when they didn't come back that he got trapped there because since we didn't see her disappear we're going to assume that she didn't turn to dust okay if she is able to get word to the other heroes which she should be able to she'll find a way she's smart who is the most technologically adapt person who is able to save him tony stark and now here matt pat i know i reference matt pat a lot but that's just because honestly i believe that in the theorist community especially with marvel movies matt pat does all the hard labor for us and then we like come up with like some pretty good theories after he's ground up but he did a theory about a year ago i think right around it was probably around when the first ant-man movie came out came out he did it about how ant-man is the most powerful being in existence like he is the most powerful superhero and how he could defeat Thanos. And in his most recent Ant-Man movie, uh, Ant-Man theory that I did just a few days ago, he stated, wow, maybe that's the reason why he wasn't in the Avengers and Freddy Wars, because Thanos would have stood no chance. Which, I think, Ant-Man is going to be the way that they actually finally destroy him. Which is why they put Ant-Man House Arrest now, so that Thanos could get the upper hand. Which is why they didn't have Ant-Man disintegrate. Which is why Cat we don't see Cassie disintegrate. Which is why Doctor Strange gave the time stone up so that Tony would remain alive. Because Cassie can discover that her dad's gone. Cassie can find a way to the Supers to talk to Tony Stark. To um, talk to the Supers. To bring in him to get their dad back. And once they get their dad back, Ant-Man can use his full powers. That Again, Matt Peck can explain what's better. I'll link his video down below. And with those new abilities also created, if they're using science, and Marvel is very good at using science, then that will mean that Ant-Man will be the key to destroying uh, Thanos. Which, again, explains why they made it so he could not be in the original fight for Thanos, against Thanos. I'm just saying it all lines up pretty perfectly if they play it out like this. I'm just saying they did a very good job. Okay? But that's all I can say. I need to go. I'm going to be late to Evelyn's house. I feel really bad. But it's fine because she loves me. Um, so all my social media is right up 
I don't know, it might be here, I don't know, I, I can't think, I'm just one idea, it should be over here, all my social media is right here, uh, comment down below what you think they're gonna do with the future movies and how it's gonna connect more, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, share this with any of your friends who like, like theory videos or movie review videos like this, like I said, I will do a full theory with, uh, on like the theory that I just explained, my theory of how they're going to connect everything, I will do a full video about that where I have more proof and more evidence and where I'm actually speaking clearly and not just trying to rush it through to say it so that I can have a claim on this theory. Okay, um, other than that, I think that's all I need guys, so let's have some fun and smile because this these theories are getting convoluted, but I love them.